And after Mass, they had, it was a Sunday morning Mass, they had a very nice uh, brunch for everyone who attended the Mass, an opportunity to share some fellowship and to, to meet the new bishop, I guess. And um, at one point during that brunch, uh, a woman, and who I presume to be probably her granddaughter, uh, came up to me. And the girl was, the girl was probably about, maybe about 11 or 12 years old, and she was, as most, looking up at me, right? <laughs> but very friendly, and she said, how are you? I said, I'm fine, it's good to be here. I said, what's your name? And she told me her name. And I asked her, I said, well, when do you start school? She said, I start school next Monday. But then she said, but, she says, I celebrate my birthday this week. And I said, really? I said, when is your birthday? And she said, Wednesday. She said, Wednesday, August 15th. And I said, wow. I said, you have a birthday on a very, very special day, right? The Feast of, of the Assumption of Mary. She looked at me like she didn't know what I was saying, like I was speaking another language. And again, the adult she was with, who I presume was her grandmother, looks at me and says, Oh, Bishop, she's Methodist. <laughs> said, whenever we have care of her, whenever she's with us, she just goes to Mass with us. <laughs> no. Anyway, it was kind of a funny moment, and I, I tried to explain to her as best as I could that Catholics believe that that Mary, you know, when her earthly time here on earth was finished, that she was assumed into heaven, body and soul. I still don't know if she got it, and who knows what happened when she got home to her parents. But anyway, it was a reminder to me, of course, that not every Christian believes in the assumption. That's not a teaching that every Christian community or church embraces as we do as a Catholic church. Now, other Christian churches, our brothers and sisters who believe in Jesus Christ, uh, will certainly recognize Mary as a historical figure. Some may even believe in the Immaculate Conception. Some may not. Some may believe in the virgin birth. Some may even say she is the mother of God. But what many fail to believe is the doctrine, the teaching that we celebrate here today, the assumption of Mary, our Blessed Mother. This is one of the oldest feasts in our church's history. The celebration of this feast goes back to the early centuries of the church, to apostolic times. And though it wasn't referred to as the Assumption, it had other names, eventually it became known as the Feast of the Assumption of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God. Of God. And it is a feast that is celebrated by Catholics all over the world today. Back in 1950, Pope Pius XII declared, made an infallible statement regarding this teaching of our faith. Again, that Mary, the Virgin Mary, when her life was finished, when her earthly journey was completed, that she was assumed body and soul into heaven, where she is with her son. Now, my brothers and sisters, where else would we believe Mary would be? Where else would she be? She was herself immaculately conceived, meaning that she was conceived without original sin in her mother's womb. She gave birth to the Son of God. She most perfectly followed God's will in her life, and she remained pure and sinless throughout her life and faithful to her son. Where else would Mary, the mother of God, be but with her son in heaven? And if she is there, 
and she is the fairest of our race, as we call her. We hope to be with her one day. But like Mary, we continue our earthly pilgrimage, our earthly journey, hopefully to the kingdom. And like Mary, we strive in our lives to perfectly follow God's will, to live the gospel, to live the teachings of her son, Jesus Christ. And because we are weak, because we suffer from the effects of sin, because we are tempted, we often fail in our lives. But brothers and sisters, there is cause for hope because Mary is in heaven and she is there to intercede for us. She wants nothing more than for us to be close to her son, to have a close and personal relationship with her son, Jesus Christ. And as a good and faithful and loving mother, not only to our Lord, but to each one of us, she stands ready to pray for us as we continue on our journey, as we continue to struggle in our lives. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, it was hard for me to say no to my mother, even though a certain point, I think when I was about 14, I was taller than her, right? I couldn't say no to mom. And I like to think of Mary in that way, in her relationship with her son. If she is there to intercede for us, and she asks a favor of her son for one of us, how could her son refuse her? How could he refuse her? And so, brothers and sisters, today we honor Mary. Once again, we reverence her. We don't worship her as sometimes Catholics are accused of doing. That worship which we refer to as Latria is reserved for God alone. But we honor Mary. We reverence her. We respect her. And we celebrate her life. Because again, she walked the path that we walk, and she stands ready in heaven to intercede for each one of us. Where she is now, we hope one day to be. <laughs> 